After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither. Somebody say, Come up hither. Amen. Father, we love you today. Pray that you'd anoint your word today to your people. That, Lord God, you'd truly speak to us. Show us. Quicken to us your word. Lord, the things that apply to our lives, both past, present, and future. Let the work of the Holy Ghost do its holy work here today. And everybody said in Jesus' name, you can be seated. Come up hither. We open this series looking at, at the life of John who demonstrated the power of the gospel to take us on a journey of personal transfer, transformation while in the pursuit of the kingdom of God. The next week we explored the great truth in the opening chapter of the book of Revelation and that truth that is resounding and echoes throughout all 22 chapters. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. He is greater than every seal. He is greater than every trumpet. He is greater than every beast. He is greater than every dragon. At the end of the day, when all of heaven and earth has passed away, Jesus Christ will reign supreme and he will be with his church forever in heaven one day. Amen. I don't care what you deal in life. If you can remember this truth, Jesus Christ is above them all and through him all and in him all, we will see and know all that God has for us. Somebody say Jesus. And so today, this week, uh, after uh, last week, the past two times I have preached, we talked about the church. Chapter two and chapter three, it, were, it was the final words of Jesus to the church after all of the apostles had passed save John Jesus used John to to write a memorandum to the church and in each church he identified their works he he identified their virtue identified their faith but every church he told them repent repent there's some things that you need to do better and if you will repent and overcome there's a promise of eternity that I have for you and we know that message and spirit is still saying that to the church today those things that are not right in your life repent those things you've let down on repent those things that you need to let go of repent and because if you will repent God will help you overcome and you can be in heaven with him one day he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church and so we close chapter 3 and this morning we step into chapter 4 and we are given a vision of the throne room and we are we are given the beginning of, of prophetic events that are to take place and we find the chapter opens with a voice like a trumpet that says, come up hither, come up hither. How many of you want to see the kingdom of God? Amen. You want to see the kingdom of God? John, who is the writer of the book of Revelation, I taught it this morning in Sunday school, but I want to reiterate it. John wrote the words of Jesus to a leader of the Jews, Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night. And Jesus said in John chapter 3, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, I'm here to tell you, if you want to get to heaven, you got to be born again of the water and of the Spirit, or you can't see it and you can't enter the kingdom of God. Amen. And it's to that people that I speak today, they would hear the voice echoing through time. I don't know the time. I don't know the hour, but I do believe that Jesus Christ is coming again. He's coming back a second time for a church that's made themselves ready and are looking for his appearing. Amen. No doubt as we continue to read through the book of Revelation, we're going to read about calamities and judgment and fire and hell and demons and all kinds of, of war 
war and, and all kinds of death and all kinds of scourges. And I believe if you want to escape the coming judgment of the earth and the coming judgment of eternity, you better get in the church because the church is the only way out of this mess. Amen. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what's ahead of you. If you will get in the church and stay in the church, amen, God will help you. Some have left the church because they say there's something wrong with the church. Amen. I can identify with that. There's all kinds of troubled people in the church. Amen. There's all kinds of uh, people that don't do like they should in the church. But I'd rather be in an imperfect church than in an imperfect, an imperfect world because the church is God's mechanism to get us out of here. And if we've ever committed, been committed to the church, if we've ever been faithful to the church, today the day to get right and stay in the church because it's the only way you're going to get out of this wicked world amen this world seems to be on a fast track to hell amen there's depravity and rebellion there's wars and rumors of wars there's hurricanes and earthquakes there is all kinds of racial division all kinds of trouble in this world there's diseases and plagues Woo, I'm preaching today. Hey Amen. I should turn on my exercise meter today. Hey Amen. I might get 30 minutes of exercise, brother. I, I, I can feel like I feel the circle up again today. Woo, I bet my heart rate's going. Woo. Hey Amen. If you're going to get out of this world, you're going to have to get in the church. Hey Amen. I'm here to tell you that, that no doubt God, when he came... Amen. And he shed his blood for the sins of men. It was his intent that all men would be saved. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And yet all are not saved and all are not repenting. But he paid the price. Every soul that goes to hell will be going to hell over the sacrifice of Christ, well, over the efforts that he made, over his mercy, over his grace, and through his blood, in spite of it all, they'll go to hell without excuse. Somebody say, praise the Lord. And here in Revelation chapter 4, to the church, there is a voice like a trumpet. It says, come up hither. The, the Greek is anabino hode. Anabino hode, ascend to this place. To rise, to mount, to, to spring up. If I could say it, to rise up, to be resurrected. We understand this concept of resurrection is not simply a new concept found in the New Testament. If you turn in your book to your Bible to Genesis chapter 5, the Bible tells us about a man named Enoch who walked with God and was not because God took him. Amen. Some would say, What happened to Enoch? I would say Enoch was the first foreshadowing of what's going to happen in the rapture. Amen. Those that are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord you see this uh, uh, foreshadowing again in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2 and it came to pass as they still went on and talked and behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire parted them asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven this idea of resurrection, it was a point of controversy. It was a point of debate among the Jews in the days of Jesus. Jesus himself asked a question because he knew the Sadducees and Pharisees, though they were united in their hatred to Jesus, they were divided in the concept of the resurrection. Somebody say the resurrection. Amen. You even see the controversy continues into the New Testament. Paul dealing with believers of that day who said the resurrection was past. But Paul uh, 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 nipped, nipped it in the bud and he said, if there is no resurrection, we have no hope. 
Amen. I want you to know today that one of the principal doctrines of Christ is a doctrine like most of the doctrines have been neglected. It is one that is neglected. Amen. No doubt everybody talks about heaven at funerals and they all want all grannies and grandmas and grandpas and mamas and daddies and children to go to heaven. And many people do not make preparation and they do not make the effort, but they can find a preacher somewhere. No, they never met them. No, they never understood them. No, they never uh, had any knowledge of them. They find a preacher somewhere to put everybody in heaven. But I'm here to tell you today, it doesn't matter what a preacher says when you die. It doesn't matter what your mama thinks about it when you die. It doesn't matter what your children think about you when you die. Everyone is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And that's where the truth's going to come out. The Bible says every idle word is written down. Every idle deed. And men shall be judged for the deeds they did in their body. There is a reckoning of the recording coming one day. And if you want to escape the coming judgment that has been set for all of mankind, you better hear the voice of the Lord. You better hear the message of this preacher today. If you want to be saved, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Come up higher. Ascend to this place. Amen. You know, Jesus, even in the last few weeks of his ministry, he came to the place where Lazarus was laid. A man who everybody knew Jesus loved him. They sent a message to Jesus and Jesus said, I'm coming in a little while. And in a little while, Jesus showed up and Lazarus was dead. The sisters of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, came to Jesus and said, if you would have just been here, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he also live. Jesus said, take me to where you've laid him. And he went and he stood outside that, that, that tomb where the, where the stone had been rolled away. And Jesus lifted up his voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out bound head and foot. I guess he was hopping. Not sure how he walked with his feet bound. But here he comes hopping out. Did you call? And Jesus said, loose him. And let him go. Somebody say resurrection. Amen. And finally we see the encapsulation of the gospel. Jesus no doubt was born. And he lived. And he did miracles. But we find the people he came to save. They lifted up their voice as one. And they chose Barabbas over Jesus. And they said, what will we do with Jesus? And they said, crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. And Jesus was taken to a cruel cross. After being beat with, with the unspeakable tortures. After being spat upon and stripped. And after dealing with all manner of indignities by his stripes, we were healed. He was smitten and stricken for my iniquities. He was bruised for the chastisement of my peace. My peace was put upon him. There... Hanging between two thieves. Jesus looked at all of them. And maybe even at you and me. And said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And Jesus breathed his last. He said, it is finished. And he died. They took his body down from the cross. They wrapped it. They wrapped it and washed his body. They put it in a tomb of a wealthy man. They rolled the grave stone into place. The government came and sealed that stone that should be unmovable. They sealed it. And they placed in front of it a guard. 
guards to be sure the followers did not try to come and take the body away but they were ill prepared for what happened the Bible says there was an earthquake the angels appeared the stone was rolled away and Jesus came out Jesus came out victorious somebody said victorious victorious somebody say victorious somebody say victory over death hell and the grave he 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 did what no man had ever done before no doubt there had been uh, Enoch who was resurrected no doubt there had been Elijah who it seems was resurrected and no doubt Lazarus by the word of Jesus had been resurrected but nobody did what Jesus did Jesus came forth the Bible says he was seen above 400 men for 50 days and then he ascended into heaven and he told them I'm coming back say that with me he's coming back say it again he's coming back he's coming back he's coming back the disciples left that place they went to an upper room and were baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire an evangelistic a fervor baptized them and they went to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and Corinth and Ephesus and all of Asia and all the world was evangelized through the apostles and their believers preaching that message Jesus gave them to preach if you go look in your book of Acts and you'll find amen Peter preached the same message that Paul preached the same message that Philip preached the same message they preached and told people what Jesus told them they needed to do why 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 because they knew that this isn't just a heaven proposition John said it in John chapter 3 and verse 17 for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved I'm here to tell you today we live in a world that is damned amen every every child every man every woman at some point is going to reach a time where they're going to have to give an account for their souls I don't believe babies go to hell I don't know I don't think so I hope not but uh, the bottom line is everybody that's born that grows up God's going to deal with them and if they don't respond in faith and obedience and live a life as those who in the scripture who were approved by God amen there's a whole lot of people going to hell it was never God's intent for people to go to hell he created a paradise for people he created a, a, an idyllic place where there was no death there was no sorrow there was no knowledge in them of evil and wrong but we know disobedience rebellion came and all the trouble and struggle that's in the world today somebody say where disease comes from where does death come from where does tragedy come from some would like to blame it on God but God didn't create none of that amen that was created by the disobedience of mankind and you and I today just as Adam and Eve had back in the beginning we have an opportunity to choose God to choose faith to choose obedience to choose faithfulness and we one day will have Eden restored paradise recovered and restored if we will live till that that great getting up day somebody say come up here the rapture it is a doctrine it is a doctrine that that we need to consider amen our, our song books are full of songs that people don't sing about anymore amen people don't talk about heaven people don't think about heaven except when somebody's dead people don't live with an idea of eternity today why why is it maybe it's because our shoes are too comfortable maybe our food is too filling maybe our houses are too nice maybe our beds are too comfortable maybe our cars get too good a gas miles I don't know what it is but there is something about 
materialism and an entertainment of love of this world and the deceitfulness of riches that causes us to lose sight of what really matters sometimes. I'm here to tell you, church, thank God for the blessings of the Lord. Thank God for comfortable shoes and nice places to live. But if any of these things cause us to lose sight of eternity, we need to pray, God, whatever you got to do to help me see my life in the scope of eternity. Help me see things and value things properly because I want to go to heaven. I want my children to go to heaven. I want my neighbors to go to heaven. I want to save myself from this untoward generation. I about stripped out my voice. My voice is saying, what are you doing? Usually save this for the last five minutes. You expect me to keep this up for 30 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans 6 and verse 4 Amen. We talk about baptism. <clears throat> you know, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. How many of you believe that? The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. But it's there is something available to us that is greater than just a knowledge of what Jesus did. We're able to identify with Jesus by experiencing the gospel. Romans 6 and 4, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together, everybody say baptism, in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection Amen. You know, I've seen it drawn out and I've explained it many times. Amen. To experience the gospel is to repent. Amen. And that is a way that we die out to our own selves and to our own agenda. Amen. We are buried with Christ in baptism and we experience the resurrection power by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Colossians 2 and 12 says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein all ye also are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. When Jesus gave us the gospel of John, and it Jesus said, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Jesus was wanting everyone to be rapture ready. So when Jesus says, come up higher with a voice like a trumpet, we will get up and go higher. The Bible tells us to comfort one another, to encourage one another, to exhort one another, that if you want to go to heaven, you better get ready. Jesus is coming again for you and I. His coming may be while I am asleep. His coming may be while I'm driving down the road. His coming coming may be while I'm in the drive through His coming may be while I'm at church worshiping God with you. I don't know where and I don't know when. God will come for you and He will come for me. I don't know if He's going to come by for me or you in natural means. I don't know it's going to be just a solid beep coming from the heart monitor or whether it will be the sound of a mighty trumpet. Amen. While I'm yet alive, I just know one thing that when my life is over here on earth I don't want to go to hell I don't want to suffer with the wicked for the rest of my life because I had unrepented sins or I failed to be born again amen I'm here to tell you today if you want to go to heaven you better get ready because he's going to come and you're not going to have a chance to get ready get ready now while there's still time 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50. Paul writes, Now this I say, brethren, 
that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment. Somebody say in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Amen, how fast is the twinkling of an eye? It's fast. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be What's it say? Changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death... Where is thy sting? Oh, grave. What's it say? Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Somebody say steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Philippians 3 and 21 says, Who shall char change our vile body that it may be fashioned unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. I want to tell you today that the older you will get, the more heaven will seem glorious. The older you will get, the, the idea of having a new body seems to be much more worthy of giving God praise. Amen. When pains are in your body and strength has left you and it seems you can't see as far as you used to, there is a hope for the believer that there is a heaven coming one day that this mortality shall put on immortality and this corruption shall put on incorruption. Amen. I don't know what heaven's going to be like, but I can tell you I want to go to heaven. Amen. Where I'll have a new body. Amen. I'll have a new life. I'll have a new hope. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I can tell you I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Amen. If you just want a glimpse into why you want to go to heaven, read Revelation chapter 5 this week. Read Revelation chapter 6 this week. Read Revelation chapter 7 this week. Go, go to verse chapter 9 and chapter 10, chapter 11, all the way to Revelation chapter 20. Amen. You'll get a revelation. Oh my God, I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be those that are going to suffer for eternal damnation. I want to be with those in forever eternal bliss with Jesus Christ. There's such a stark contrast today. Such a stark contrast of what God Jesus Christ himself came to save me from my sins. Say that with me. Jesus came to save me from my sin. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us that God had tempted no man, but every man is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. What does that mean? It means your struggle may be lying. Amen. I've known people that couldn't tell the truth. They, uh, if it met them in the street, they, they'd rather lie than tell the truth. They'd look at Jesus Christ and tell a lie. That may be your struggle. But the Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. But the Bible also tells us that it's more than just liars going to go there. Your struggle may be doubt. Doubt. The Bible says that not only liars go to hell, the Bible says the fearful and unbelieving go to hell. Amen. What does that mean? What I'm telling you 
is we all have to make a decision. I am going to be a believer. I am going to be a believer. The world may laugh at you and mock you and call you every name but a child of God, but there's got to be something that has to switch in your brain and say, you know what? I don't have to understand everything. I don't have to know the answers to everything. I make a decision. I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe his word. I believe his promise. I believe in heaven and I believe in hell. And I don't care who disagrees. I don't care if they show me some scientific proof that there is no heaven and there is no hell. I choose to believe in God. I choose to believe in his word because I'm telling you all the promises of God are found in a simple beginning of a choice to say, I am going to believe God. And when you make that decision, it's no longer excuses why you're disobedient. Because believers obey. Doubters disobey. Do you want to be disobedient? Quit doubting. And just go ahead and choose to believe. And that belief is going to cause you to be obedient. Some up, somebody say, come up hither. My final scripture text today, I'm going to give my voice a break in your ears, maybe your seats, and I'm going to conclude. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 14. You know, we live in a world today <clears throat> that much of religion has been homogenized. What do you mean homogenized? I'll be honest, I've never had real milk. I've never milked a cow. But I've heard <clears throat> if you get milk directly from the source that the butter's in it and the cream is in it. And you let that milk settle and uh, the cream rises to the top. You scrape that cream off the top and you put it in a churn and you can make that butter, that cream into butter. And what homogenization has done is they take the milk and they run it through all types of boiling processes. And it's probably good they do that, maybe. But they take out all this stuff and you can get 1% milk. You can get almond milk that ain't milk. In fact, I think they had to quit putting it on the label. It's, not, it's almond, almost milk. Like milk. It ain't nothing like milk. Has it, anybody that ever thought almond milk was milk had ever had milk? It's like really bad melted ice cream. Today's Christian world has a homogenized message. And they've taken all the cream out. They've taken all the butter out. And what they are saying is they're saying, hey, this is the best thing ever. You're a winner. Jesus loves you. Heaven's for you. God loves you just the way you are. Come as you are. You don't have to change. You don't have to repent. Uh, don't worry about what the Bible says. They, they're deleting stuff. They're changing stuff. They're twisting stuff. And the greatest thing is they're just not teaching the Bible anymore. People don't know what the Bible says. Much of what people say they know about the Bible isn't in the Bible. The scripture says the day will come that people will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers that will tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. And you know who makes the most money today? Amen, are the people that tickle the ears the best. You see their books in all of the gas stations. You get their books for free at all different sorts of places. But I'm telling you, the only book you can trust, there's nothing wrong with books. I like books. I've written a few books. But the only book we can trust is the Word of God. And if you, if you, I don't know where you are in your reading this year as you and I strive to read the Bible through this year, if you just take some glimpses, snatches, read some passages in the book of Revelation, I believe the reason why the Lord calls that book to be put in your Bible, that all of us would never forget, eternity is real 
there is a heaven and there is a hell there's no place in the middle I want to go to heaven what do I need to go to heaven got to be born again of the water and the spirit how many of you want to go to heaven can we stand together Jesus and brother Zach brother Ryan will go with you show you where to go if you want to go up and get ready to get baptized amen hallelujah Jesus we love you today can we just talk to Jesus hallelujah God I love you today I thank you today for your goodness and your beloved mercy to me I pray Lord Jesus that you oh God would help us Lord to consider our lives to consider our ways to consider our decisions Lord to consider our doubt to consider our faith Lord God I want to be saved I want to please you God I want to know you in a greater way God I want to walk in a closer way to you God I want to know what it's like to be raptured Lord when the resurrection takes place God I want my children to be saved I want my friends to be saved but Lord above all else God I must be saved God, I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would baptize us with a sincere, fervent desire that says, God, I want to be saved. Whatever I need to do, whatever you have for me to do, God, if there's anything I need to do, God, I want to do what you have for me, oh God. In the name of Jesus today, in the name of Jesus today, if you're here today and you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, and you want to get baptized. I mean, we have one person already that is getting ready, but if